Quite often, examiners report a lot of errors by exam candidates in dealing with indices. This is in part due to the weakness in applying the laws of indices, and in addition, practicing of those laws. Hello everyone, this is our Junior Certificate Mathematics lesson. My name is Rawani Khari. I will I'll later be joined by Elena Boaho in today's discussion. Let us have a look at the lesson objectives, which will guide us, which will guide today's discussion. The lesson objectives. It says understanding laws of indices. So we are going to be looking at the laws of indices. This is what we are going to cover. We are going to cover the laws of indices. But before we can go on to these laws, let us have a look at what these indices are. It says an index is a number with a power. That is when you are given a number with a power, then we refer to that as an index. The index of a number says how many times to use the number in a, in a multiplication. And then it also says an index is also referred to as a power or an exponent. That is, if we are to represent this using notation, the index notation, where you have y to the power a, this is in the form of an index. Now here, y to the power a, here, A is called the power exponent. Or this can also be referred to as the index. This is what our power is. A is a power, or you call it the exponent or the index. That is, you can use any of these ways. So in today's discussion, you'll realize that we'll be using these to refer to the same thing. If we want to refer to power, you may use the word exponent or index. And all these basically means the same thing. And then here, the y is a base. So that's what we're going to be discussing. And we need to know what an index is. This is the mathematical notation for the index y to the power a, where a is the power or the exponent or the index, and then y is the base. Right. Now, when I started this lesson, I said I'm, I'm joined with Elena here, by Elena here, Boaho, and then let me hear from her what she wants us to cover. Good day, everyone. My name is Boaho Bapadil. You say to manipulate expressions, we use the loss of indices. What are these loss of indices? Can you please explain the multiplication loss of indices? As I hear it being stated so often. Thank you, Wow. You are saying I should elaborate on the multiplication law of indices. Loss of indices. The rule is, the multiplication law of indices says when multiplying like bases, keep the base and add the exponents. So you will be multiplying situations where the bases are the same. And then what do you do when the bases are the same? You keep the base and then add the exponents. This is what you do. Remember this word exponent, we can always refer to this as an exponent, the power, or the index. Let us have a look at what we can do. It says, when multiplying like bases, keep the base and add the exponents. Now, let us represent this in a mathematical way. a to the power m multiplied by a to the power n. What does the rule say? The rule says when multiplying like bases, keep the base and add the exponents. So the base here is an a, this also an a. So you got like bases. The rule says, we are to keep the base. So we'll keep A. And then what do we do? We add the exponents. So this will be A to the power M plus N. This is what the law says. It says when multiplying like bases, you keep the base and then add the exponents. So this is the law. Usually this is how the mathematical, rather the multiplication law of indices is written. It's a to the power m times a to the power n, giving you a to the power m plus n. 
And this simply because we are saying when multiplying like bases, keep the base and add the exponents. This is the first law of indices, and we refer to it as the multiplication law. Let us have a look at an example on how we can apply this law. Application of the multiplication law. Right. We have x to the power 5 times x to the power 3. How do we simplify it? The rule says this will be equals to, the rule says when multiplying situations where the bases are the same, you keep the base and then add the powers. So we got the base here as x, this is also a x. So this will be x to the power 5 plus 3. This gives us x to the power 5 plus 3 is 8. So it's x to the power 8. We simply have to keep the base and then add the powers. Then the next one is 2 to the power 3 times 2 squared. The base is a 2 here, and then we've got a 2 as well here. So the bases are the same. And then the multiplication law says when the bases are the same, what you simply need to do is to keep the base. So we'll keep the base 2. And then what do we do? We add the powers. So this will be 3 plus 2. 3 plus 2 because it says add the powers. Then this will be 2 to the power 5. And then what is 2 to the power 5? When we leave your answer like this, this is in the index form. But if the question didn't say leave your answer in the index form, you need to evaluate this 2 to the power 5. And then 2 to the power 5, it's, you can take your calculator and then find out what 2 to the power 5 is. Because you need to be sure 2 to the power 5 is 2 to the power 5. And then what do you get? 32. 2 to the power 5 is 32. So this will be 32. 2 to the power 5 is 32. We have evaluated. This is how the multiplication law of indices is carried out. Always make sure that you check for the bases. If the bases are the same, you keep the base and then add the powers. Like we have done with the two examples that we had over here. You are emphasizing much on the multiplication operation. I believe I understood you. What are the other bases that we should know? Please discuss them. Thank you, Wow. You are saying I should present the division law of indices. Let us have a look at the division law of indices. What does it say? The division law. The law says when dividing like bases, keep the base and subtract the exponents. Remember, with the multiplication law, you simply need to keep the base and then add the powers. But here, the law says when dividing the like bases, keep the base. So you are going to keep the base and then add, or rather, not add, but subtract the exponents because you are dividing. So you subtract the exponents. Remember, we are still dealing with the division law of indices. And the law says when dividing like bases, keep the base and subtract the exponents. Now, let us represent this statement in a mathematical concept. Right. It says when dividing like bases, keep the base and subtract the exponents. So, if we have x to the power 5 divided by x to the power 2, the bases are the same. So what do you do when you are dividing situations where the bases are the same? Right. To illustrate this one more, let us have a look at the general form. Then we'll go back to this. Right. It says, when you have, when you have uh, a to the power m, divided by a to the power n. What do you do? It's not minus, but it's divided by. You keep the base. So this will be a to the power m minus n. This will be a to the power m minus n. Now, 
we've got a situation here. A to the power 3 divided by A to the power 2. What do we do? It's A to the power 3 divided by A to the power 2. This will be this will be A, we keep the base, then subtract the powers. A to the power 3 minus 2, which will be A to the power 3 minus 2, giving us A to the power 1. And then A to the power 1 is the same as A. This is how we do it. Remember, before giving you this example and then the general form, I said we'll go back to a situation where you are given x to the power 5 divided by x to the power 2. So how do we simplify this? We have dealt with a general form which says you are to keep the base and then subtract the powers. So even here, this will just be x to the power 5 minus 2. Keep the base and then subtract the powers. And then this will be 5 to the, not 5, it will be x to the power 3, because 5 minus 2 is 3. So this is how you apply the division law of indices. Now, let us have a look at, let us have a look at uh, another example. Let us have a look at another example. It says, not the power of power, but we are still dealing with the division law. And then we have to look at the examples. Another example is a situation where you have 24 times x to the power 6 divided by 8 to the power, rather 8 times x to the power 4. This is, you are expected to divide this. Now let us work it out. It's 24 x to the power 6 divided by 8 times x to the power 4. This is what we have. Right. Now, what we'll do, you are going to divide the integers. So we've got the integer here 24, and then the integer here is uh, 8. So this is simply 24x to the power 6 divided by 8x to the power 4, because it's division. And then this will be, you have to divide the integers. 8 into 8, it's 1s. And then 8 into 24, it's 3. So this simply means it's 3x to the power 6 divided by 1 times x to the power 4 is just x to the power 4. And then what does the law say? The law says when you have this, you simply keep the base and then add the powers. So this will be 3 times x. Now this x is x to the power what? We've got x to the power 4 here, and then this is x to the power 6. So x to the power 4 and then x to the power 6. x and x, these are like bases. So we'll write x as it is. Then this will be x to the power 6 minus 4. Because the law says keep the base and then subtract the powers. And then this will be 3 x to the power 6 minus 4 is 2. So the answer is 3 x squared. Thank you, sir. I'm really enjoying this lesson. But before we part, are there other basic laws that we should know in addition to what we have just discussed? If they are, please discuss them. Your question is, how do we apply the power of power law? We'll have to look at that law, the power of power law. Let us have a look at it before we can look at examples. It says the power of power law. When raising an exponent to a power, keep the base and multiply the exponents. And then we need to represent this in a mathematical way. It's a power of power law. Now, 
when we have a to the power m and then all this raised to the power n it says you will keep the base so we'll keep the base a and then after keeping the base a what do you do you multiply the exponents so in this case you are going to multiply m times n this gives a to the power m n this is the power of power law and then let us go on and give examples with regard to this law the power of power law these are the examples the illustrative examples we have uh, k squared or raised to the power 3 so it's k squared or this raised to the power 3 what do we do this will be according to the power of power law this will be k raised to the power 2 times 3 and then this will be k to the power 6 it says keep the base and then multiply the powers so this is how we work out the power of power law this is how we simplify concept involving the power of power law you simply keep the base and then multiply the powers or the exponents let us have a look at another example to elaborate more on the power of power law the example is uh, 3 to the power 2 or this raised to the power 3 this will be 3 to the power 2 times 3 because the power of power law says keep the base and then multiply the powers so it will be 3 to the power 2 times 3 giving us 3 to the power 6 and then what is 3 to the power 6 what do we get when we multiply 3 6 times this will be 729 you can take your calculator and then check what you get when you raise 3 to the power 6 it will be 729 this is the numerical value always make sure that if the question doesn't state the kind of answer that you should give you evaluate your answer if the question says you leave your answer in index form that's when you leave it as 3 to the power 6 in this case and then I want us also to look at another principle which is of important to you it says let us consider this x to the power 0 to be equals to 1 the rule is any number raised to the power 0 is equals to 1 and then let us have a look at how this rule can be useful to us any number raised to the power 0 is 1 how can this be useful to us let us take say 100 to the power 0 not degrees but this is to the power 0 we are saying any number raised to the power 0 is 1 so even when you raise 100 to the power 0 you don't get 100 you are going to get 1 because the rule says any number raised to the power 0 is 1 take say 20 to the power 0 20 to the power 0 is 1 so any number raised to the power 0 is equals to 1 and then we can always look at the mathematical demonstration of this uh, power of 0 let us get x to the power 6 divided by x to the power 6 what are we going to get it's x to the power 6 divided by x to the power 6 this will be x to the power 6 minus 6 and this gives you x to the power 0 and then what is x to the power 0 this is equals to x to the power 0 this gives you 1 according to the law it says any number raised to the power 0 is equals to 1 but then the question is how do we get this to be 1 we can always do this to ascertain yourself that a, when we raise any number to the power 0 you are going to get 1 
x to the power 6 divided by x to the power 6 is x to the power 6 divided by x to the power 6. This is equal to x times x times x times x, 1, 2, 3, 4, times x times x divided by, and then we got x to the power 6 dividing by x to the power 6. So this will be x times x times x times x, 1, 2, 3, 4, times x. We need to check the number of x's here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 3, 4, 5, times the last x, right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This x cancels this, so it's 1 here and then a 1 here. This x here cancels this one. This one will cancel this. This x cancels this one. And then this one cancels this. This one cancels this. And then what do we have? We have 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times 1 divided by 1 times 1 times another 1 times 1 times 1 times 1. And then 1 times 1 times 1 times 1. How many ones do you have? 6 ones. When you multiply those ones, you are just going to get 1 divided by 1, which gives us 1. So when you, multi when you divide, rather, any number given to the power 0 is equal to 1. And we have demonstrated that every time when we get a number raised to the power 0, you are going to get 1. And this law is basically from here. This is how we do it. We have now come to the end of today's lesson, but before we can conclude, let us go back and recap, or rather look at what we did today. The lesson objective says understanding the loss of indices. And then, remember, we dealt with the multiplication law of indices. And then what does the multiplication law of indices say? The multiplication law says when multiplying like bases, you keep the base and then add the powers. And then, after that, we went to the division law of indices. And then, what does the division law of indices say? The division law of indices says, when you are dividing indices with the same base, what we simply do is you keep the base and then subtract the powers. And then, the third law is the power of power laws. Now, the power of power laws simply says, keep the base and then multiply the exponents. This is the power of power laws. And then lastly, we dealt with a situation where a number or a variable is raised to the power 0. And we said when a variable is raised to the power 0, what we'll get is a 1. That is, any number raised to the power 0 is 1, or a variable raised to the power 0 is 1. That's all I had for you today. Until we meet again in the next lesson, thank you.